Hello, hello. Got put a little lip, lip, uh, lip balm on. All right, you guys. So, when you come in, go ahead and say hello. How you doing? <clears throat> so, tonight, <clears throat> let me drink some water because, listen, I've been on the go all day. Getting stuff done today. So when you come in, go ahead and say, hey, how you doing? So I know you're here, you're watching. Hey, Janet, thanks for tuning in. So tonight, we are going to talk about prevention. Now, what does prevention entail? Prevention entails safe sex. It entails the use of condoms and all protective barriers that prevent you from becoming in contact or infected with any type of STD or STI. So, look what I got. So, we're going to open these up so I can show you guys. Because, believe it or not, many people have never seen a female condom. So, I'm going to open this one up and show you guys how it looks. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about the regular condom. And we're going to talk about flavor condoms and what their purpose serves. Because a lot of people still misuse flavor condoms. So, we're going to talk about that. <clears throat> we're also going to talk about um, other ways to prevent the spread of any STDs, <clears throat> STIs, and mainly the HIV virus. So, share this video. Share, share, share. If you're watching a replay, hashtag replay. And I'll reach out to you and say hello. Hey, um... Hey, everybody. Hey, Don. Who is that? Hey, Monster. Hey, you guys. So, if you come in, please speak. Thanks, Don, for sharing. Yes. What did I say, top fan? Yes. Top fan, Don. Thank you. Hey, Precious. All right, you guys. So, <clears throat> you know, there are so many ways right now that we can prevent the spread of STDs and HIV. And that mainly is by... All of our protection. We have med medicine that can protect us as well as the act of using actual items like condoms, dental dam, uh, <clears throat> female condoms. But who can tell me? And I know it's going to be a delay in the video, so I'm going to give you all a chance to answer. But in the comments, I want you guys to tell me the number one and the most effective, the 100% effective way to prevent the spread of any HIV, STD, STI. What's the only effective way? And it's 100% effective. So I want you guys to type that in the comments. And I'm going to give you guys a chance because I know there's a little delay. <clears throat> there we go. Raw said it. Dawn said it. Tierra said it. Abstinence. Sh Shantia said it. Abstinence. Abstinence is the only 100% effective way to prevent it. Now, what does abstinence mean? That means no sexual activity whatsoever. No oral, vaginal, or anal sex. You mean what? No oral? So, yeah, none of that. Abstinence doesn't mean you're just, you're not having, you know, vaginal sex. Abstinence means none of that. No oral sex, no ain't no no vaginal none of that people try to take that and say oh well i could go and do this no you can't it's still gonna not be a hundred percent the only way is a hundred percent shandria said it kissa said it thank you ladies so much abstinence is the only way <clears throat> now how can you prevent hiv from anal and vaginal sex well these little babies right here condoms condoms although condoms are not 100 percent effective they lower the risk of you getting any type of std or sti anywhere from 90 to 95 percent you guys it lowers your risk lowers it listen so you can you cannot just 
get HIV automatically if you're using one of these things. Certain things have to happen, and we're going to talk about that. Um, now, how do you prevent it from oral sex? So, have you guys ever went to the dentist's office, and you've had to have a procedure done? The doctor gets out this really thin latex film, usually different colors, and it's rubbery, stretchy. They take that film and they put it around whatever tooth or area that they're going to be working on. So they isolate that area. That is called dental dam. Dental dam also is an item that can be used for performing oral sex. And this is oral sex from man to female. Now, why would you want to do that? Because I know a lot of people out here receive and give oral sex and they literally use nothing you use nothing they don't and in order to have safe effective oral sex you have to use these things so for females giving a male oral sex you want to invest in flavor condoms this one is bubblegum flavor flavor condoms most times flavor condoms are different colors this one is like a purple and mo you can tell most of the time flavor condoms because they are see-through. You can see it. It says right here, I don't know if you can see it, it's backwards. It says flavor waves. And then on the front here it says bubble gum. <clears throat> so you have that for female giving a male oral sex. Now, of course, if it's same sex, you still, you use one or the other. If it's female, female, you use dental dam. If it's two men... You still, you use flavor condoms. It doesn't change. You are never supposed to put your mouth on anyone's genitalia. And you want to know why this is? Because there are many STDs and STIs that are in the genital area that can be transmitted from genitalia to your mouth and your throat. People can have herpes in their throat. Not just in their mouth or in their lip. It can travel down into their throats. So you do not want to perform oral sex on anybody and not have a protective barrier in place. Because when you do not have it in place, you're putting yourself at risk of one of these infections. Alright, so that's how you prevent it with oral sex. Now, another question a lot of people ask is, how well do condoms prevent HIV? Now, again, we know condoms are not 100%. <clears throat> and even if you look at the condoms, it also, you know, lets you know everything on a condom. It tells you on the, a lot of them tell you on the back. <clears throat> this one right here specifically says, and I don't have my glasses but I'm going to push through. It says, when used properly, latex condoms are intended to prevent pregnancy, HIV, and many other sexually transmitted infections, though they cannot eliminate risk. So that means, that's letting you know, yes, this is going to protect you at the most it can do, but it cannot guarantee you 100% that you will not still be infected. If someone has a virus or someone has an infection that you can get from unprotected sex or from this condom breaking. <clears throat> now, another question, can using a lubricant help reduce my HIV risk? Yes, lubricants absolutely um, can help lower that risk. Why? Because lubricants keep and allow condoms from breaking or slipping. And it's like, what? Yes. Because think about it. If a condom is being used on a dry environment, that condom is risking friction, and friction can cause the condom to break. So lubrica lubrication is actually recommended to use with condoms to prevent and to, you know, prevent them from breaking, but to also, um, you know, Add to the experience. You know, they got all kind of lubes now. Back then, they just had this old regular old plain old KY jelly. Now they got some warming stuff. They got some flavor stuff. They got too much going on, honestly. But hey, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> hmm? 
don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I might eat a salad. The kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting I'm giving my, my dinner menu, y'all. Huh? Uh I might see if she might want sub with or something. I mean you can. I just All right, you guys, so what'd you say, Don flavored condoms? Uh, all right. Now this is one a lot of people don't know about. Can male circumcisions prevent the spread of the HIV virus? Who can answer that question? Let me get a yes or a no in the, in the comments. Can male circumcision prevent HIV? Let's see if anybody, <clears throat> anybody thinks they know the answer. Can male circumcision prevent HIV? All right, I see a couple responses. <clears throat> Black says no. Barbara says no. <laughs> to she say, I believe it's a no. Hey, Lynette, thanks for popping in. Toya says no. All right, so being circumcised versus uncircumcised does not decrease your risk of uh as much as any other risk that you're putting yourself in. But I will say this. Someone who is circumcised is less likely um, to get infected by a female who is HIV positive if there was a risk of them coming in contact, meaning no condom usage um, or no protective barriers when having unprotected sex. So... If you are, if a man is circumcised and a woman is HIV positive, his chances are very low. The risk is still there, of course, because it's unprotected sex. Now, if the man is uncircumcised, the risk is a little higher, and I'm going to tell you why. And I, I love the the fact that I know this answer because I learned it in, <laughs> I learned this answer in um, anatomy. <laughs> I was taking an anatomy class, and I learned this answer. So I'm a little proud of myself, y'all. <laughs> but the answer as to why a man who is uncircumcised has a higher risk is because when you're uncircumcised, you have that extra foreskin. Now, on the tip of a man's penis is what's called squeamish cells. Squeamish cells. Sounds funny saying it. Squeamish cells. These cells are actually cells that actually attract the HIV virus. They attract it. So whenever a man is infected with the HIV virus, this is an area on the man, the tip of the man's penis, where the HIV resides because it's attracted to that particular area because that area houses a lot of white blood cells and T cells. And so think about it. When you're having unprotected sex, Sometimes you might not have, I mean, people don't have rough sex all the time, but think about type, the times when you may have had rough sex. Think about how fragile the skin on a man's penis is and also your va vagin uh, vaginal lining is. So just think of that impact, you know, causing those cells to, you know, possibly lose the first layer of skin and exposing those T cells into you. You, I mean, it's just a whole lot that you have to look at when, when you're talking about it. But that is a reason why. And then on the top of them being uncircumcised, that leaves the foreskin covering a lot of area on a man that some men don't always clean good. They don't. Because you literally, if, you, if a man has extra skin, has foreskin, is uncircumcised, they literally have to pull back that skin to clean themselves and they may not always get every everything it's a breeding zone for bacteria literally um so that's kind of what puts them a little more at risk if they're with a partner who is um 
HIV positive. <clears throat> All right, so another prevention tool. And again, on February the 6th, I'm going to go into these in depth. I'm going to go into prep and pep in depth. But for the sake of today, talking about prevention, I just want to let you guys know that, yes, there is a prevention that is to prevent you from becoming infected. Hey, Alan, I love you too, bestie. And there is a regimen that can be taken if you are infected after the fact of knowing that someone's HIV positive. So there's a pre-exposure prophylaxis, which is called PrEP. This is a pill called Trivada. This pill is also used to treat uh, persons who are HIV positive, but through trials and through, um, you know, all the testing they've done, it has been shown to lower your risk of becoming infected with the virus by taking this pill. Now, does that mean you still not use a condom? No, you still use a condom. Um, and that was actually a question someone asked. They were like, you know, I'm in a debate with these people, and they're like, oh, well, they said that their partner's taking PrEP, and they're not using condoms because they were told that if they're taking PrEP, that they can't affect their partner. And I'm telling them, uh, and they're saying they're undetectable. Listen, yes, undetectable does mean untransmittable, but at the same time, I don't care about any of that when there is still a 1% chance of infection. You know, being undetectable definitely does lower your risk of infecting someone else and has been, for the most part, proven that it can't happen. But that doesn't mean you go out here and be stupid. And I'm just going to keep it real. You don't go out here and be stupid and still not use a condom just because your partner's undetectable and you're taking Travada. You still use a condom. Because guess what? You're going to be sitting there looking like boo-boo the fool when you are part of that 1% who just happened to get infected despite doing everything else. So you still want to do what you need to do. You know? That's like, that's just one of those things where, you know, you give people information and information and they get it. They still go and do the opposite. And then when they end up being put in a situation that they were trying to avoid, I, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm the main one that comes and say, guess what? I told you so. See why you ain't listen. I'm that friend. I'm the friend that's going to tell you, well, hey, <laughs> I tried to tell you. I tried to told you. That's me. That's just me. So, when, when you're hearing this information and you're hearing you equals you, yes, you does equal you. But that does not mean put yourself at risk. Because even people who are pushing a you equal you, they will still tell you, use a condom. The 1% chance is still there. This does not eliminate that 1% at all. And then, so for PEP, say you... You know, you went out one night and you had a one-night stand or you had sex and just didn't think about using a condom. And you potentially now have been exposed to the virus. You can go to a clinic, ER, and, you know, the local clinic, the ER, anywhere that does HIV testing or that does HIV testing to the point where they also can prescribe medications. What they're going to do is they're going to draw your blood. They're going to run your blood against all of the HIV medications that are in our system. They are going to come up with a regimen. Um, now, I don't know if you saw my video I did on my personal page about someone got stuck by a needle on the job working as a nurse and got stuck by a needle. They went immediately, same day, got tested and was given Isentris and Travada as a regimen for PEP which is a post-exposure prophylaxis. They have to take that medicine for 30 days. They have to also make sure they go back and get tested when they're told to go and get tested to make sure that, yes, they are negative, that the virus did not infect, you know, they did not get infected with the virus if the person was HIV positive. Because you never know if someone's HIV positive in any incident. If you get stuck by a needle, have unprotected sex, you don't know. They can tell you no and it can be a yes. So you want to not take the risk of having unprotected sex and go through this whole process. Cause right now she's sitting there going through it because she's like, man, I don't know if this patient, you know, they don't even have an updated, they don't even have updated HIV labs 
on this patient to even tell her if the patient is HIV positive or not. And then come to find out when they finally talked to the patient, the patient said, well, I know I ain't got it. I ain't, I don't even need a test to tell me I don't have it. Excuse me, sir. What do you mean? That's the only way you're going to know if you got it. So she's really like going through it right now. So you guys pray for her, um, that, you know, the patient, is negative and that she doesn't get infected with the virus because that would definitely be devastating um but you have to think about all this hey felicia thanks so much for educating the public you're so welcome definitely and this is not going to be a long video because but i'm getting ready to get to the fun part in a minute <laughs> all right so the next couple things um the next couple questions I want you guys to participate, so it's going to be a yes or a no. Um, so, can does anybody know the answer to this? Can you get a vaccine to prevent HIV? Is there any type of vaccine out right now that can prevent you? Now, key word is vaccine. That's the key word. A vaccine is kind of like... You know, like you get a vaccine for the flu, you get a vaccine for, you know, MMR, different stuff like that. All right, so I see a couple no's. The answer is no. There is no vaccine. There's no HIV vaccine. The PrEP that's available is not considered a vaccine. <clears throat> Can, okay, I don't know if you guys know what micro, um, <clears throat> microbicides are. <clears throat> but basically microbicides are um it's just like clean like a uh uh cleanse that you can use like they may have cleanses if someone has MRSA you know or they give them like uh antibacterial baths stuff like that there is no uh microbicides that prevent HIV PrEP is not considered a vaccine. When you think of vaccines, you think about uh, the flu vaccine. You think about uh, what's the other vaccines they have? Pneumonia, you know, pneumonia vaccines. The ones that you can go into the doctor and they inject it. PrEP is not an injectable. Um, it's a pill. It's actually a medication. <clears throat> okay, another question. It says... If I'm living with HIV, how can I prevent it, prevent passing it to others? And we just talked about that. Using condoms, um, making sure that if you, you know, one of the biggest things is if you're not, if it's not a contact through sex, say you have a cut, you're bleeding, you just want to make sure you take care of that as soon as possible. Yeah, like chicken pasta is a vaccine. Um, you want to make sure you take care of any open wounds, cover them up. So that nobody's accidentally exposed to any open wounds. Um, and then also, by taking your medication that lowers your viral load, makes you undetectable, that also lowers the risk of infecting someone else. Hey, Jalissa. Um, I don't know if I said hey to Christy or Felicia. Sorry if I didn't. Um, and then, let's see. Also, prevention... Preventing HIV infection by, from drug uses. Um, most of the time, that is because you, someone sharing needles. So you just want to make sure that if it's if it's someone who if you're someone who is using drugs and using needles, you just want to make sure that you're not really using needles. They now have for people who just have to have a fix of some whatever drug, they have needle exchange locations in various cities and states. So that people are not sharing needles and exposing each other to whatever they may have. And also, you take your ARVs, your antiretroviral <clears throat> medicines. You you make sure you take that so you can become undetectable. Um, and then also, how can a mother who is positive prevent the infection to their child? I mean, it's the same thing. Make sure you're in doctor's care. Make sure you're doing everything the doctor's telling you to do. Um, and <clears throat> it's not always 100%. That's what a lot of people have to remember. It's not always 100%. A lot of doctors now are, ask, are actually pushing mothers who are HIV positive to get their tubes tied. 
And I feel like that is the worst thing that you can do to anybody because if you're able to say, okay, yes, I can be with someone. I can have, you know, safe sex with them. And you have all these ways that someone who's positive can have children. Why push for someone to tie their tubes because you just feel like they don't need to have kids because they're HIV positive? No. If you have ways for them to, you know, have kids, then why not? Why why not do that? You can do um, in vitro, IVF. They have sperm washing options. You know, a little a little bit of it can be costly. You know, they have other they have many ways that it can be done. You just want to make sure that you're doing you're letting the doctor know, hey, this is the option we're gonna take. And so that you can be followed throughout the whole process. Um, let me see. While you're helping me, I've been off the scene three years. I got to refresh. Yes, Felicia. Go and refresh, honey. Yes. Nothing like a good refresh. I have dealt with women who was having children and infecting them all. It was court ordered. Oh, yeah. Now, that in that instance, they will court order, especially because a, a lot of women that do that, they never go to the doctor. They just go have kids, and when they water break, that's when they go. So they haven't got any medication or anything the whole pregnancy. So by the time it's time to deliver, their viral load is in the thousands, you know. So that's why it's always important to be in care. And this is for any pregnant woman. Not just if someone's HIV positive. All right, y'all. So the fun part. What we're going to look at first. Are we going to look at a female condom first? You guys tell me. Do you want to look at a female condom first? Or do you want to just look at a regular condom? I think we probably all pretty much know what a regular condom looks like. Um, Now, I put my gloves on because I want all this spermicide on my hand. All right. So a couple things that you want to look at. Before condom is ever used, listen. Never let a man open a. Listen, I know it move. Everything moves fast. We know that everything moves fast. But, and this is for men too. You want to make sure you, the date. You want to check the date because if it's past a certain date, the spermicide could not be as effective. The condom could not be as effective. It could break easier because it's older. So you want to check the expiration date. Usually the expiration date is on there. It's in black. It'll have the lot number and it'll have the expiration date. And what else does it have on here? And then, of course, it has the information I read to you guys earlier. All right. Toya said female. Yes, Felicia. All right. So and the same with the female condoms. So these are the new female condoms. The most recent ones that I know of. Now, if they got any more past this, I haven't seen them yet. This is the female condom, too. So, this is a more updated version. And on the back, it actually has shows you how to insert it. It shows you. It gives you the directions. Um, and it also lets you know that it's, you know, natural rubber latex. And then, again, it also says, just like the male condoms, it says here... If you're not going to use a natural rubber latex male condom, you can use the FC2 female condom to help prevent yourself and your partner. And then it makes you understand that um, condoms for men are highly effective at presenting sexually transmitted infections, including HIV, if used correctly. And then it says, before you try this condom, make sure you read the directions. Because listen, don't want y'all hurt yourself. <laughs> All right, so we're going to open this one. And then also on these, because these are in a little packet, these actually have the expiration dates kind of on this little flap here. So it gives you the expiration dates here. And these, you can order these online. Amazon sells these. You can go to health departments. If you're ever at the health department, all you just have to say is, hey, do you have any female condoms? More than likely, they will have female condoms and flavored condoms. So... <clears throat> This is a female condom. So you take it out of the pack, and it looks like this. Now, it looks like it has two rings, right? No, they're actually not, Toya. Um, so this is the actual opening here. So this is not really a ring or anything. 
And this part here does not, I want you guys to know this because a lot of people don't, don't pay attention. This part here, you know, on male condoms, the ring actually kind of like, you can fold it all the way out. This ring here, does this part here does not fold out easy. It can, but you have to kind of work at it, and you don't want to risk ripping it. Um, so, notice in here, this has a ring in the inside. So, this ring here, the ring that's in here is what you actually would insert into the vagina. So, what happens is, this ring, when you get ready to insert it, it's going to go right in place because that's how it was made and designed for a woman. So it's going to go in place once you put it in. And it's flexible. So you can see here it's not flexible. It's not a, not hard to bend. You literally want to bend it like that. And it ha and, and you can see, I don't know if you guys can see, my hands are oily. So it has a little bit of um, slickness to it. But also, you know, you can, you, put lube, you can put lubrication on here. It's no problem putting lube there. <clears throat> So you want to make sure that you bend that when you insert it. Because basically, when you're inserting it, it's going to go in. You're going to push it in. Once it's in place, the ring is going to pop in. The ring literally is going to be up against your cervix. So if you guys have ever seen a diagram of female anatomy and how the cervix sits, and want, you know how the cervix sits, this is going to sit at the cervix. It's going to sit at the cervix. So basically, you don't, and you do not, you do not, listen, you do not use this along with a regular male condom. You do not, because friction will cause both, one or both to rupture. So, once it's in place, this part here remains on the outside. It remains on the outside. So basically, when you're having sex, the male, he will insert his penis through here. And you just go about your business. <laughs> but, I mean, <clears throat> that it, it's not hard to use. A lot of people are scared to try them. You know, they're like, what's this big old thing? Why am I doing this? But, um, I mean, there are... The, they're not bad. I tell every female, at least try it once. If you hate it, then you just hate it. But at least give it one try because this is another option. Because guess what? Listen, if you go out on, if, if you with a guy, and you know men do this all the time, man, I ain't got no condom. Well, we'll go to the store. I ain't don't feel like going to the store. Well, just come on. I'm clean. No, you're not. Because you don't have a test to show me. But guess what? You can have one of these in your purse. Or you can have a male condom. Whichever one. Have a condom with you. I tell females this all the time. Keep a condom with you because you never know. They're going to try to play you and say they don't have one. They don't want to go get one. Guess what? You ain't got to go get one. I got one right here. And guess what? When you put it out, go. they're going to be like, what is that? <laughs> there are women, I kid you not. And I learned this when I was going to... um school and we were talking about this in um one of my classes women before they go to the club if they know they're gonna have a one night stand or have a whatever there are women who actually put these in before they go to the club they put these in before they go to the club so if they end up having a one night stand all they gotta be like look i got a condom already they do that so if you guys are just tuning in this is what a female condoms look condom looks like <clears throat> yes, you can place this on ahead of time. Now, it's not recommended to have this in for more than, um, I believe it was like, you don't want to have it in for a long time. I, that I do know. But like, say if you, it's like 7, 8 o'clock, you're getting ready to go to the club or something, and this is what some women do. They'll put it in, you know, this part is, hang, is, is where it's going to be. And they will go to the club, especially if they think they're going to have a one-night stand. It, and all that. It is big. Because, <laughs> look, he got to get in there. He got to get in there. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it serves its purpose. It really does. Um, let me put that back in, in the pack. 
Now then, of course, you guys know, you know, the male condoms. Um, it's a little more than one to two hours, Felicia. It's a little longer, but I wouldn't have it in there for more than, I say, no more than, what? No more than four hours. But it, they do, they do say, you know, it can be a little longer. All right, you guys, so... The male condom, as you guys know. Uh, and this actually, you know, it has the whole little the whole little peak at the top. So this looks like a look, look like a little baby um nipple for a bottle. <laughs> Alright, so you wanna always make sure no holes, no nothing. Um, and like I say, people are always so in a rush to have sex. They don't do this stuff. They don't examine condoms and stuff. You know, they don't. They put it on and they go. Um, but... <sighs> Marissa, you so crazy. <laughs> Alright, so you want to make sure, especially if you're female and you're putting this on a male, you want to make sure that um, the condom is turned the right way because... If it start, if it allows you to roll it down, it's to turn the right way. Now, if this was turned inside out, you would not be able to roll this down at all. There's no way to roll it down. So you want to make sure if you're putting it on a man, you know, some man be like, "Hey, baby, put it on for me." Whatever. <laughs> so once you put it on the right way, it does roll down. <sighs> Cause listen, my little cousin learned the he learned the hard way. He was out there being grown, having sex. Ain't ask nobody about no condoms and stuff. And that joker put the condom on inside out. Now, my first question was, how the heck did you get it to roll down? Oh, he said, I just kept rolling it, rolling it out till it got all the way down. <laughs> this fool had to go to the ER because he thought he had to got an STD. But it was just that by him putting the condom on inside out, the spermicide had done went into his penile shaft and caused the, inf it caused the bladder infection. <laughs> So, you want to make sure you putting these condoms on the right way. Now, never let a man tell you it don't fit. Listen, you have seen videos. You have seen demonstrations. They fit. They fit. You have seen people put these on their head. This is over my whole hand right now. They fit. And they're not tight. I can still take, look, I could bend my fingers. I could do all that. You know, it fits. Don't let nobody tell you, oh, it's too small. No, it's not. Unless they just need a magnum. And even at that, if they need a magnum, guess what? The magnum, still, same thing. All right. Talk to you later. Love you back. So, never let a man tell you the condom does not fit. It fits. Like a glove. <laughs> All right. Because I've definitely seen people putting these things on their head crazy as it be <clears throat> thank you tina and then you can see it does roll down and now they have now if you got somebody that's well endowed they have condoms that are you know longer than this they do they have some <laughs> my mom in the other room so i can't tell y'all <laughs> but they have I i've seen some Big, bigger than this, y'all. Don't laugh at me. I'm just saying. I like the I like the gold packs. <laughs> hey Tara, thank. Uh, did I say thank you, Tina? I don't even know. I'm over here cracking up at myself. All right, so. And then they have different kind of condoms now. They have the ones with the reels, the one that's extra sensitive. You're supposed to feel everything, but you want to make sure these are used the right way. Now. <clears throat> To get on the subject of dental dam, people always ask, okay, for oral sex, is dental dam effective? Can you still, does it feel the same? Dental dam, you feel nothing different. You don't even know it's there. Um, and people say, oh, well, I don't want to buy this stuff. I don't want to order stuff online and all this. So guess what? An alternative to dental dam would be saran wrap. And y'all might say, saran wrap, that's for cooking. No, doctors will tell you, 
Saran wrap has the same effect because it's a very thin film and it allows you to still have sensitivity um, when using it. So, most, uh, most definitely. <sighs> now, a big no-no. Yeah, some condoms do give allergic reaction. So, if you're allergic to the latex or allergic to whatever's in it, make sure you find one. And sometimes you may have to order them online. Some people have to use lambskin condoms because they're allergic to latex. So, you just have to find the one that is right for you. Now, with flavor condoms, you guys have to understand something. Do not have sex with flavor condoms. Do not have vaginal or anal sex with flavor condoms. And this is almost a given, but some people don't understand why. Flavor condoms, literally, they have things in them, they have uh, chemicals in them, especially the part that gives it its flavor, that can cause an allergic reaction. So you do not want to have any type of sex, vaginal or anal, with the flavor condom. That's why it's called flavor. This is for a one. This is not. I'm not gonna just say a woman. This is for anyone who's performing oral sex on a man. You can use this. Now I've heard men say they even use this in the replace of dental dam or saran wrap for oral sex on women. So I mean, hey, you got a lot of options around here. I'm not gonna open this one because flavor kind is hard to come by sometimes. Um. Well, actually, I probably can't. No, nah, I ain't gonna open it. It's about to expire anyway, so it's gonna get, get trashed. Um, but you want to make sure that you do not use this for vaginal anal sex. What did you say? Send you some of them? I think these, this one say February 2019, because I done had these for a while. Um, I got a whole bag in there of regular condoms that expire. They expire this year, but they expire, like, after the summer. But... <laughs> Like, I, y'all think I'm joking. Let me show y'all. <laughs> my mom's my, oh, Lord. Huh? Five something, I think? Yeah. Oh, it's in my purse where it used to be. All right, y'all, so this is the bag I got right now. This is a whole bag of condoms that I have. These are all the flavor condoms I have, so it's not that many. But this is the whole bag of regular condoms that I have. And these, let's see. These expire June. These expire in June. Yep, so this is the whole bag that I got. I might just um, hand them out somewhere or something. I don't know. They're going to get out of here before June. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so. And like I said, you always want to make sure y'all check the expiration dates. You never want to use the expired condom. Don't risk it. Don't risk it. All right, you guys, so does anybody have any questions before I get off of here? <clears throat> um, I'm open to answering anything. If you have missed the first two videos, we talked, the, the first video I did was on, <clears throat> it was on, uh, can't think right now. <laughs> first video I did was on what is HIV and AIDS. The second video we talked about um, prevention. Well, let me see. No, we talked about, what did we talk about last week? Transmission. We talked about transmission last week. And then this week we're talking about prevention. And next week, where did I put my paper? I'll be moving stuff around, y'all. Let me see. Where did I put my notes? Uh, 
All right, you guys. I know I put it somewhere. I can't find it right now, but um, I'm gonna post. I'm gonna post what we're gonna be talking about next week. Cause I can't find my can't find my paper, but I'm gonna post it. Hey, Mila. Um, so we have one next week we're gonna talk about, and then February 6th we're gonna talk about prep and pep. So make sure you tune in because we're gonna go in depth with those medicines. We're going to talk about the effective rate on those. We're going to talk about a couple cases where during the trial. Uh, yes. What was that? Oh. Prep. Well, we're going to talk about where prep was used and the person was actually infected with the virus. Um, so, oh, I found my notes. All right. So, next week we're going to talk about testing. So, next Wednesday, January 30th. We're going to talk about testing. We're going to go in depth. I'm going to tell you guys the different tests they do, um, how effective those tests are. Because um, people all say, oh, is the quick test better? And we're going to talk about the home test too because I'm, listen, the home test, I'm kind of like, not that it doesn't work because it does work. But I'm just like, do you really want to do an HIV test at home with your partner? And that test pop up and tell you something that you don't want to know. Because I know me, uh, if I was doing a home test, they'll be dead before the police get there. Mm -hmm. Doing a home <laughs> My mama told me, oh, Lord, she's talking about killing somebody. I'm just saying. You got to think about it. Somebody that's sitting at home, y'all doing a home HIV test together. That test come up positive. You think it's going to be a kumbaya moment? No. Somebody finna be hurt that day. So we're going to talk about all that when it comes to testing. Uh, February 6th, we're going to talk about prep and pep. Uh, February 13th, we're going to talk about um, what it's like for people living with HIV. February 20th, we're going to talk about what, go, what process happens when you are newly diagnosed. And February 27th, uh, we're going to discuss understanding care and HIV treatment. Which is it's under the thing. Remember, it's under the flap. Yeah. And so, those are what we're going to discuss. So, again, if you missed January 16th and the 23rd, the transmission, I mean, the transmission, not January 20th, not January 23rd, that's today. <laughs> but if you missed the first video and the one from last week, they're on the page. You can go back and watch. Just make sure you hashtag replay. And again, if you guys have any questions about tonight's discussion, you can inbox me and I will be sure to answer your questions. All right, you guys have a wonderful evening and thank you for watching. Please have responsible and safe sex.